of Allentown again, and he's here just for a brief amount of time, but we were able to uh, spend some time together to get into some more information about extraterrestrial uh, encounters and also um, the development of uh, technology through alien means. Now, am I all washed up saying this, or is there something to what I'm saying? It's a great view of what you're saying. But tell me more. Well, as I had said in the previous uh, segment, there was an agreement made in 1954 between a certain group of aliens commonly called the Greys and President Eisenhower because the threat of a massive invasion was there and a massive uh, improvement in technology, technology so far beyond what we understood. The government panicked, felt they had to make an agreement to try and buy time. Two things were done. One, there was a mutual agreement of not interference with each other. We would not interfere with the alien technology if they did not interfere with our technology or our lifestyle or our society. And they were given first a special base out in the West, and then eventually a whole series of underground bases were built for them. Some 75, and it was covered in Congress by saying these were uh, special retreats for the president in case of a nuclear war. What did they want these bases for? Are they tapping our minerals? What are they doing? They were for combined purposes, basically underground operations involving the aliens. The greys cannot stand our sunlight, and they cannot live on the surface. They, but what do they want with our planet? I mean, why? What, what's the big attraction? What they claimed that they wanted, and this again goes back to what they made in the way of their initial statements, is a place where they can live and develop a new genetic body line because they are dying as a race. Ah. Oh. Now, they claimed they had great advanced technology, which they would share with us. This was the carrot that was put in front of the Just president's face. a minute. Space. New genetic body line. Uh, did they bring genetics here, or did we come upon that? Is this another piece we of have alien technology? Deal, we have a great deal of genetic knowledge ourselves these oh, days. All right. But they also have their own. And the purpose of the underground bases was to do the hybrid experiments and uh, crossbreeding between humans and aliens. Mm -hmm. And uh, from some of the horror stories that have come out of these places, the artificial creations of bodies are so bizarre in some cases that uh, they give rise to all of the legends out of the Greek mythologies and then some. But they have actually exist now. Whether or not they've been successful in a new body line is a moot point. All of the evidence seems to indicate they are not. Mm. But the work, if you will, goes on. In the meantime, they did give us some technology. This is all, I'm talking only the graves or other groups. And among it was some medical uh, technology involving a special laser scalpel. They, apparently the graves are heavily involved in the cattle manipulations and the cattle mutilations out throughout the West and out throughout the world. And they use the cattle, certain parts of the cattle apparently for their, not only their experiments, but part of their feeding process because they have such an atrophied intestinal tract and digestive tract, they cannot eat in a normal manner. They have to absorb their nutrients through the skin, which is a very strange and difficult process. How do you absorb nutrients through the skin, aside well, from osmosis? If you, or I, you if you or I, as a human being, go take a bath in a tub of water, water is absorbed through the skin. That's a perfectly normal process. And if you put certain things in that water, whatever is in the water will also be absorbed through the skin to a degree. Blood, they do the same thing. Nutrients, yes. minerals. They do the same thing. They mix uh, bats of blood and sit in them. And there are certain other elements of both animals and humans that are put in these mixes, and uh, that's their nutrition. It sounds so horrible. It is. It's the way they apparently live. Now that's only one group. The others apparently, other groups are not in the same mode. Either during this time or prior, other groups arrived. Certain of them have been here a long time, such as the Orion Confederation groups. The mainline Orion people are seven foot tall, typically. The tall ones. Very tall, right? Like in Close Encounters? Tall and thin? Yes, perhaps. Kind of delicate? Uh, the tall, thin, delicate ones are the old greys. There is a series of old greys which run seven foot high. They're oh. approximately 1,200 years old, minimum. And they do not have much to do with the small, short greys, so to speak, three foot, three and a half foot. Those three and a half footers are considered almost clones, and they're considered a peculiar form of worker, if you will, to the larger graves because they come in various assorted sizes, if you will. According to the reports I have uh, seen and the information I have read, uh, there's another larger group of graves, about four, 
four and a half foot, possibly up to five, who have large hook noses and uh, facial features similar to our own, but they are still basically grays. And there's even a larger group yet. It sounds like Rumpelstiltskin to go ahead. There's an even a larger group yet that runs five, five and a half foot, and apparently a male female. Now, the smaller grays are to me, You're talking about ra uh, clones, but are, could these just be, as we would look at them, different races? Yes, they okay. could probably. Okay. The larger ones apparently do mate in the normal manner as we consider yes. mating. Yes. The others have lost the capability totally, the small ones. They do not mate. They reproduce by a process of... Cloning or hybridization and growing in a way which we don't really understand. Uh, some government people may. It's not well uh, defined and it's not well reported. It sounds like we're stuck with these people. Very much or so. These, this culture, whatever you want to call it, from outer space, because we really don't have the capability of defeating them. That has been one of the big problems. There have been massive government efforts, all undercover, produce weapon systems to clear them from the planet. Every attempt to do so has failed, and we've lost certain numbers of military personnel in some of these operations. And they are ingrained in the planet, if you will. Their stories are that, quote, they like it here because this planet is very similar to their old home planet, which suffered some kind of disaster. Uh, the Greys are talking about, not mm -hmm. some of the others. And they like it here, and they intend to stay. And, and it there, wouldn't be, there wouldn't be any other races out there from the other planets and galaxies that would come here to our aid. Why should they? Or should they? That's a very debatable point. Yes, why should they? This is if what we got ourselves, seminars are made of. <laughs> if, if we got ourselves into this kind of a mess, we have to literally get ourselves out of it. Now, there are other groups, the Iran Confederation. There are subgroups within that confederation. There's another uh, totally independent group, but somehow has formed an alliance with the Orions. It's known as the Syrians, Sirius A. Then there is the Leverons, which are part of the Orion Confederation, and they were the ones who supplied the bulk of the technology for the Phoenix Project, the Leverons. The Orions were in the background, and apparently they were hoping to take over the whole project. And the Syrians are also there with a very high order of electronic technology. They supplied some of the equipment also, from what I understand. And you have all kinds of other aliens. You have, of course, the Pleiadians, which have no part in this. And while they had offered several times to help us with our problems, mm -hmm. the offers were turned down, and now in a strange position, we have become, it would appear, allied with some of these alien groups, and therefore it's hands off. If the human governments form an alliance, a working alliance with the aliens, and accept them, then... What happens from this point on is our own problem. If the aliens had come in and invaded and had not been accepted, then Pleiadians or certain other outside groups would have a right to come in and remove them. But since we have agreed to their arrival, we have agreed to give them bases, have agreed to work with them, and have agreed to have an interchange of technology, and have allowed and fostered their staying here, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm and are working in various processes of cross-breeding, however successful or unsuccessful they may be, then they are part of our planet, part of our environment, and have become, in essence, part of our government. Very secretively, but nevertheless part of our government. Consequently, outside help is almost impossible. The only exception now would be if the Combine went out in space and tried to invade another planetary system somewhere in our galaxy, then there would be reason to take action. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But as long as they remain here on Earth, and we don't interfere with anybody on the outside, we uh, are caught up in our own stew, literally. Our own stew. That's a good way to put it right now, and, yeah, and I hate stew. to think of how those greys eat. Uh, <laughs> we'll be back in just a moment. Okay, Same you going to take it over? Yeah, take it over. I'm not the channel we got. Linda, continuing now with our guest, Al Bilic. There's a book called The Philadelphia Experiment and Other UFO Conspiracies. I say get this book right now. It's on the newsstand. If you can't get it, give me a call and I can tell you where. Okay, we're continuing now uh, along the lines of extraterrestrial intervention. And you said we have a working liaison with them, our governments and most governments. Then it's been a big hoopla about uh, uh, the one world power of unifying uh, the, the world 
against an alien threat, but the alien threat is already here, in other words. That's the problem. Okay, so in other words, I also hear that not only in exchange they're giving us information for the stealth technology, also they gave us information for the Excalibur, which I understand is like a, a sonic device, sonic cannon, and wherefore some of our pilots are now piloting UFO craft up around Nevada. That's true. And there's a whole area of... Uh, uh, and we've also started manufacturing modified aircraft, which are based on UFO, if you will, designs. One of the interesting uh, exposés of this was somewhat tongue-in-cheek, but nevertheless, you got the message. It was the last August in, uh, I believe, Aviation Week and Space Technology. They did a series on the new experimental aircraft of our government, Air Force and Navy. The Navy was working with an A-12 aircraft, and that thing is a triangular wedge-shaped aircraft, which is almost a direct duplicate of the gray ships, the smaller ones. Mm -hmm. And they have uh, stated in that article that there have been some very strange tests out in uh, Edwards Air Force Base area of California, where people were awakened at 2 and 3 in the morning with noises and rumblings, which were reminiscent of the old Saturn V tests many uh, decades prior, about 20 years prior. And these new aircraft make so much noise in certain of the new engine designs that they'd wake up whole communities at 3 o'clock in the morning when they were testing them, always in the middle of the night. Other aircraft have been seen flying, which are moving much faster than our standard aircraft, faster than the SR-71s, apparently. And the indications are that we are now beginning to develop technologies of our own based on alien technologies and based on the beginning of understanding of how they work. We have an aircraft called the Aurora, which flies from Edwards, perhaps not only Edwards, from there, straight up, and goes direct to the moon, nonstop, and will carry a payload. It does not have multi-stage boosters. Boy, that is something hot. Now, again, there's, there's so much information that you have. I want to find out what you know about the wheat field rings, which... These round circles are imprinted within grass and cornfields all over the world now, especially in England. It's been very heavy in England, yes. Uh, the nature of that would indicate a type of UFO presence, and I understand that with all of the furor over this in England, BBC set up TV cameras a few months ago to try and photograph on the chance that they might catch one of these in the process of creation. They caught one in the process of creation, and apparently caught a UFO-type aircraft or craft with it. They then, that is, BBC then said, well, there was a camera defect, and they didn't really get anything, and it was never broadcast. Because the intelligence network said, don't show it. Right, the intelligence network, the secret government does not want the world to know the involvement of UFOs, ETs, and the whole nine yards here on planet Earth. Because they want to control, they want to be, have the ones that have layers on with them and get all the secrets and have the power, in other words. In essence, yes. There is a basis for this consideration because many years ago, if you remember, in 1953, when there was a huge overflying of UFO-type craft over the White House in Washington, D.C., for two days and two nights on radar. Well, was 52, wasn't it? 52 or 53, mm -hmm. perhaps it was 52. As a result of that, the Brookings Institute was given a commission to study the nature of the problem and make recommendations. Namely, what happens if an alien technology comes in on an older technology, a newer one, which is far superior? One could draw, and they did use as analogy, what happens if, let's say, Western man descends into Africa and dark Africa and some of these villages where, or down in Borneo where these people had no technology, mm -hmm. had never heard of some of the modern developments, and suddenly we show up with aircraft and helicopters and all this sort of thing. What happens to them? The Brookings Institute said flat out that there's either one of two consequences of that sort of an encounter. Number one, the lesser technology or society is absorbed in the greater society and technology, or the lesser one just ceases to exist, it disintegrates. So based on, those, based on those reports of the Brookings Institute, our government took the stand, and most major governments took the stand, that we could not afford to let the public know fully, at least at that time, the nature of this invasion, if you will, and that we were being invaded by a group of much higher technology than we had because it would upset the world order, the economy, our industrial base, and our establishment, 
much less the political, but the entire military complex, the manufacturing complex, all of our ideas would go down the tubes. And along with be, religion, too. Along with religion, in many cases. It would all go down the tubes, and they felt they couldn't allow this. We'd have to do it on a gradual, piecemeal basis. Today, if you look at your TV, and I'm sure you'll find this abroad, but here you have programs like Alien Nation, War of the Worlds, and a lot of other TV programs, all dealing with Star aliens. Trek. Mm -hmm. Star Trek, many dealing with aliens. But isn't it true that some of the technology now employed in Star Trek is actually happening? We indicate, uh, I think it was uh, Duncan that indicated to us that he was sitting in a chair in Montauk and projected into North Vietnam, and uh, that then he was revealing some information to the North Vietnamese, uh, whatever they were, and then after that he was put in a sweat box, three by three by five, and after this information he gave them, he was projected back to Montauk into this particular chair. Is there any truth to that? I don't know whether it involved a chair or not, but or it was a certain unit. It was true that he was involved in certain of the operations in uh, Vietnam. So they do have a teleportation device. Yes, he was either dropped in by aircraft or was teleported there, and the whole purpose was to give military disinformation to the North Vietnamese. Mm -hmm. He was allowed to be tortured. He allowed it, and it was arranged, and after a certain point, it was supposed to break. So he would do the number of breaking and then give them the information, which they would assume was correct and was mm -hmm. totally false or doctored information. Mm -hmm. And then he was returned back to the Montauk project. Mm -hmm. Yes, that is very possible, and I understand that did happen. Let me ask you, Al, have you yourself ever witnessed or been in contact with or had an association with any extraterrestrials as we know them today? Yes, and the best part of the Montauk project. See, what I didn't mention earlier, I didn't get into it, was that in 1947 I was removed from the Navy and was given the full nine yards of brainwashing given a, shall we say, an age regression treatment, which the government has techniques now for physical age regression, only they did mine on the deluxe version. They ran me back to the age of one. Now, how large is a person at the age of one? That'd be <laughs> big, a baby. Put me in another family called the Bielik family, because my original name was Edward Cameron. Totally wiped of all memories, so I grew up again all over. Now, some years later, I became an engineer. Went through the Navy again, too, for that matter became an electronic engineer, and I was picked up by the Phoenix Project, among other things. Now, that was secret. It was not part of my memory patterns at that time, and this memory of working in that project, with very distinct memories of what parts I took part in, only recovered as starting in 1986. The project crashed in 83. It's rather fast, but there are reasons why. But as part of that project is Al Bielik. I had memories of various things I worked with. There were aliens in the underground. I remember very clearly the strange look of the Leverons, or a lot of them. They were the technicians, so to what speak. What do they look like? Do they look anything like ourselves? Essentially, they look nearly human. They had uh, six-foot bodies. They had normal appendages, feet, arms, legs, faces, but their heads were a different shape. Their skin was greenish. Let me ask you this. Uh, right now, we're broadcasting to you from New York City on uh, Park Avenue. And uh, we could go out and walk the streets of New York City at this present moment. Would we encounter or see anybody who look, resembles this? But New York, there's a conglomeration of everything. There is a conglomerate of everything here, and I'm sure you'd find aliens on the streets. The problem is, if they walk the streets, they're right, quite well uh, dis disguised. And you can do this rather readily. Put on a normal set of clothes. Since they have the normal physical appearance in mm -hmm. terms of shape, but not physical skin appearance, mm -hmm. or the facial appearance is different. Put on a set of clothes, a hat, and a set of dark glasses, and walk in the streets of New York on a not too bright day. They would not be picked out. They would do not they, be do they speak like us? Or? Yes, they can. They can speak perfectly normal English. In any language, I imagine. Probably. I mm -hmm. only heard them in English. But uh, what's the outcome of all this? What, what can we expect from this? What is your far flung speculation of how this is going to be solved? If it's not going to be solved, is it going to be escalated? And if it's going to be escalated, for what purpose? <clears throat> At the present time, it would appear that it's going to be escalated. The end purpose is take over this planet by the Orion complex, as I understand it. The purpose of that takeover is that they want this planet for its technological base, manufacturing capabilities, and of course, a certain number of humans to run all that technology. We are at the point, technologically, where we can build very advanced hardware 
based on alien designs, as long as we're told what to build and shown how to build it. Now, what about all the other people upon the planet now? Are we expendable? In their view, yes. We, we, hear we are expendable for the reason that the planet is already overpopulated, and they realize this, as well as our own human interests. And they will probably do, at some point, a mass extermination in some form or other Have they been those back? they don't want. Have they been back of anything like the, uh, the AIDS project or something like that? Where I doubt that the aliens are in back of that. Some people think they were. Yeah. But there's a very great deal of evidence to show that this was terrestrially designed, manufactured, and uh, the thought for it came from normal human sources. We better watch out because I feel that the, our Declaration of Independence is going to be shot at any day. It could be. Yeah. This is one of the problems. If we get to a full one world government as envisioned by those who would like it now, that is within, let's say, the next year or two, it would be a very despotic, very suppressive government. Now, if you had, if you had a position, a platform speaking to all those in the audience right now, is there something in your own estimation, something in your mind that you would tell them that they can do to protect themselves from all of this? Very hard. Uh, it would require certain types of small portable electronic hardware. This is in the process of being developed by a private group. It would also require a greater metaphysical knowledge because I think, and I say this out of my own experience, that if you develop sufficient mental and psychic awareness and recognize the pitfalls and the traps of how one can be brainwashed and uh, seduced either by hypnosis or by electronics, eventually you can find your own means to counter this. In other words, if you raise consciousness high enough, you'll be given the you're, immune, you're essentially immune, but it's very few who can do this to date. Al, you've been a wealth of information, and we have to have you back again. Please come back again when you're in town. Thank you very much. Thank you. And Linda will be right back. <laughs> my mind is boggled. I, I can't Not say mine. I'm dying my skin green. <laughs> then I'm going to blend right in when they take over. <laughs> but what he said, the metaphysical... I'm already getting ready. <laughs> I see that. Yeah. But well, I, sometimes you look like that when you use uh, that, that soap in the morning. Okay. <laughs> or that green mud pack. I'm going green to be pretty. Mad low, yes. <laughs> anyway, uh, I, when you mentioned the, the fact of metaphysical techniques and employing the spiritual self, that's probably one of the greatest protections. Yes, it is. And because... These, because when, when you employ um, any intuitive or psychic talents, what happens is that you turn off the, the mind, which is a, a logical and important process, but the mind does restrict one from being able to go beyond what they see, beyond what they actually hear, and, the, and, and it would link into uh, an abstract impression of what might really be going on, very quickly, very swiftly, but it works. Wouldn't it be funny if all the Macumba the black magic groups of Santeria and all the others from around the world, yeah. all these I have groups to hear that, this. Yes. That, that really project, mm -hmm. they could start projecting to the Orions, they could do their voodoo and wooji-woojis. They'd throw them in a cauldron, couldn't they? <laughs> yes.